So what have you learned in, now we're, you know, you're still very young and yet you've got a teen daughter now, I know. Um, so what have you learned through all of this, through this pushing of boundaries, through this trying to find and, and retain and sustain and evolve your identity through your civic engagement work? Well, I'll tell you, like, going to the welfare office and needing to reach out to the social worker at the hospital for charity help to pay my rent, mm -hmm. having to live in a subsidized apartment building, still, you know, my rent was like 310 a month. So you were one of those people. And I had to go walk to the food shelf to get help even though I mm -hmm. worked all the time. Mm -hmm. I sometimes worked two jobs, mm -hmm. but I had to pay for child care. Sometimes I got child care assistance. Um, you were also going to college, I think, weren't you? Well, there was, um, so I started college when I was 15. I was a full-time college student. Oh, that's right. Okay. Then I actually turned 16 close to when I act my classes actually started, mm -hmm. so I could drive myself to school. But I had finished three years of college when I had my daughter. Mm. Then I had to take some time off, and I went back to school. But okay. I was bound and determined that I'm not giving up on my education because mm. I knew that was my only way out. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm very pro-education. Mm -hmm. I try to do as much as I can to so support. So how easy was that as a single mom? Incredibly difficult. <laughs> I don't know even still today how I got okay. through it, but I was able to go back to school, and I was working as a caregiver mm -hmm. seven days a week, mm -hmm. raising my daughter who was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the client that I was working for has MS. I'm still with him mm -hmm. 14 mm -hmm. years later. Mm -hmm. But um, I live... I, worked mm -hmm. with this client and he had he lived with his mother who is mm -hmm. now 93 mm -hmm. but well she had a health crisis so I moved in with them mm -hmm. and still was taking college classes I was planning on majoring in neuroscience and going to medical school mm -hmm. and taking when did care that of change you're not you're not medical school now you're not a, well maybe you are a PhD no, or no. Doc, <laughs> but, it, but but what happened well so then <laughs> it, I I mean it, not I mean this is a good thing in my world but well how challenging it was um, is I was making sure I took care of everybody else that I had a duty to mm -hmm. and that was the right thing to do mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. made it very difficult to do my education but mm -hmm. you know I was I ended up having to live with this family and still try to take my classes I used to take my daughter to class with me mm -hmm. I'd bundle her up take her in with toys and the teacher never objected Mm. I mean, it was just... It was great. <laughs> didn't sleep at night. I was doing homework. Mm -hmm. But I still, it was so, it just was impossible. Mm -hmm. So I dropped my classes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. thought, okay, I'll sign up for them again the next semester. Mm -hmm. So I did. Mm -hmm. Well, then there was another health crisis, and I had to be a live-in aide again, mm -hmm. take care of three people. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I can't drop the classes again. Mm -hmm. So I just tried to get through it. I ended up failing the math class because I didn't have time to do the work enough to really learn it, and I somehow got to be in the chemistry class. Mm -hmm. But then because I had withdrawn from a semester and failed the next semester, I was put on academic probation at my community college. Mm. Doesn't that look kind of mm -hmm. hopeless? So you're on probation. You're a single mother. I mean, and I'm, I'm saying this tongue-in-cheek no, because but I know I can that's say what that. So you are that... You're that single mom. Yeah. You're on probation. I know what I looked you, like. You know what you looked like from the outside. Yes. That's my point. And yet, but what I knew. How I did that feel at that time? Or, or you know, what it I'm doesn't saying? feel very good. Right. I mean, on top of everything I was doing, and I was living up to my responsibilities to be a mother mm -hmm. and take care of two people that mm -hmm. I had promised I will take care of both of you. Mm -hmm. I actually mm -hmm. gave them a lifetime commitment. I said I will look out for you. Um, I care about, I just. Who does that? I, I mean, hmm. I can't, I, there are people that I love that I mm -hmm. just will always, you and, know. And what I you've will, done is this is a very personal level. Now you've taken that very public too. So you're mm -hmm. doing advocacy for, you're doing lifetime commitment, I see anyway, advocacy for people like the people that you worked and mm -hmm. work as a PCA for.